talk about how the insomniac Spider-Man gave his son a chance to say goodbye. We see Mary Jane doing an interview with J. Jonah Jameson on a podcast where she's trying to promote her new book, which honestly isn't doing great in sales. While Joan is giving her some condescending advice from a veteran reporter, she ends up going off on him, jumping his ass, but they're interrupted. The Spider-Man come busting through the window, fighting against the villainous tarantula. The fight didn't go as smoothly as it could have, but Miles and Peter were able to get the best of the tarantula. And as they swing away, Spider-Man tells Mary Jane, you're welcome for breaking up that shit show of a podcast. But later, back at Peter's childhood home, we see him and Mary Jane talking about what had happened. He tells her he, of course, didn't mean to break up the interview deliberately, but maybe he did it subconsciously. Then talk about life and talk about how Peter's struggling to pay the mortgage for his childhood home because of May's passing, and the fact that she took extra loans out in order to keep Feast afloat during the whole Devil's Breath debacle. Pete's trying to get his teaching certificate, and that doesn't exactly make a lot of money, but on the other hand, he could really use a housemate as he asks Mary Jane to move in. She tells him that promoting her book's too important, that she needs to be in the city, and she can't afford to be out in Queens. It's not about them at all. They get interrupted by Miles, who is having his own struggles and is trying to figure out what he's going to major in in college. They all need a distraction because they're overly stressed, and Miles brings up the fact he's been working on the lures that they all use. So the trio head to an electronics store, but as they pass a car repair shop, Pete's spidey scent starts going off. After him and Miles suit up, they see a bunch of hooded thugs trying to rob the place. The Spider-Men come busting in, but they're shocked when the assailants turn invisible. Obviously, with some quick thinking, they're able to spot them and beat their asses anyway. They change back into their civilian clothes and explain the situation to the cops, but when they go inside, it turns out that all of the criminals have disappeared, almost like magic. The next time the Spider-Men head out to stop another robbery, it turns out these guys can turn invisible too. After the Spideys have caught all the bad guys, MJ starts using her journalistic skills to learn more about them and what they're doing. It turns out they're working for a guy called The Hood, and they swear on everything they love this dude is magic. He's empowered by a demon. He's going to use all of the money from the things they've stolen to buy an ancient artifact tomorrow night at the pier. As they give that last bit of information, the power gets cut out, and all of a sudden, the boss himself shows up to save the crew. Despite Miles and Peter's best work and thinking on their feet, the hood manages to get away with the most expensive thing in the store, so their next best move is to use the information they got from the crew and wait at the buyer's point until they find the hood themselves. Thanks to his cloaking tech, he was actually able to purchase the artifact he wanted without Miles and Pete noticing him. Eventually, they catch sight of him, but when they go in to take him down, they're surprised learn that Parker Robbins is just trying to use a magic artifact to save his sick mother. Parker's mom is trying to tell him she's ready to go. She's not scared of what's going to happen next, but he just won't hear it. He's not ready. As he casts the spell, he's devastated to learn that it did absolutely nothing. Parker's convinced he just read the spell wrong, that he still has time to figure it out, but the Spider-Men appear and tell him that there isn't. Now, the Hood begs the Spider-Men to make a deal and ask if they don't have somebody in their life that they would do anything to save or bring back. He tells them that the magic artifact he has could do just that, but Peter tells him that he's sorry. Magic isn't real. See, the Spideys know that the Hood's just been using some of the Tinkerer's old tech, that he's not magic at all. When the Webhead tells him to face reality, Parker tells them to face this as he pulls out both guns and starts shooting. As they begin to fight, Miss Robbins raises up from out of her bed and screams and pleads for them to stop. This whole time he's been out committing these crimes, trying to prolong the inevitable, and she just wanted time with her son. He falls in his mom's lap and tells her how sorry he is, and the Spider-Men tell him to take his time. They keep the cops outside at bay. They allow Parker Robbins the time he needs to spend his final moments with his mother. Hood comes outside afterwards and tells Pete and Miles that she's gone and turns himself into the cops. After this particularly emotional run-in, Pete, MJ, and Miles realize how small their problems are in the grand scale of things. As they all return to their normal lives, Mary Jane heads into work to find out that the Bugle has just been bought back by J. Jonah Jameson.